Okay, sorry to pop right back on, but I had a bunch of people messaging me asking me what was going on. So, um, this week I saw my radiation oncologist, my oncologist, and my plastic surgeon. So I got a lot of information this week about what next steps were. Um, because of what they found when they took out my lump, and a lot of people have asked why I did a lumpectomy, and I know it's nobody's business, it's my personal choice, but... I kind of want to explain a little bit, not because I owe it to anybody, but because it just kind of helps people understand, especially if they're going through this and they don't know how to like navigate it. I think that's why I've been so open and honest about it is because I have a very intelligent husband and he asks questions that I would never think to ask. Um, so I try to share, um, as much of my experience, as shitty as it may be, and don't get me wrong, there's there's some good days when it comes to cancer. You get good news, but as shitty as the situation is, I'm trying to share it to help um, to help create awareness so that women will go get checked, and hopefully he is creepy smart, isn't he, Shannon? Um, so hopefully that women will go get checked and not wait or even pe not women men women it doesn't matter like if you have something wrong with you we often so many times put it off because we think it's nothing and had I put this off I wouldn't be here talking to you guys today so I'm very very lucky in that sense and I, I'm lucky regardless but um, I'm lucky in that sense so I from everything that they found during the biopsy my cancer is technically like stage three, stage four. They got all of the cancer out when they did the surgery, but there's a lot of precautionary precautionary measures that have to be taken after the fact. So, um, I met with oncology on Monday. I was very upset on Monday um, with the news that I got because I was hoping it would be better than it was. And I knew it was a possibility. I just was hoping for the better of the several options. So, um, I went and saw my oncologist on Monday, he talked to me about what happened during surgery, like what they found and all of that fun stuff, and I have to do additional chemo. I knew I was going to have to do additional chemo anyways, but I have to do an additional chemo in addition to my additional chemo. So, that's going to start on Thursday if everything goes right. Um, the good thing with that is it's only every three weeks, so it shouldn't like take me down as much as it did before. I should fairly live a pearly normal life, but I have to do it for the next year. So every three weeks I get to go get my chemo done. Um, but I get to go to the same place I was going to, so I know my nurses really well. Let me know if you guys can hear me because it's very windy and I apologize, but I came outside so that the kids weren't like up in my face. You guys good? Can you hear me okay? Okay, thanks Heather. <laughs> um, so, I saw oncology on Monday and he basically just told me like what was going on, what they found and whatnot, and I have to start chemo again. So that'll start on Thursday this next week and then I talk to radiology call, radi radiologist, yeah, my radiologist oncologist, that's a mouthful, on Thursday and I have to start radiation um, because of how aggressive my cancer was and um, the growth rate that it was growing and the size of the mass, like all of those things combined, I have to do the max amount of radiation. So starting, um, the 15th, I go in for what they call a mock radiation appointment to get like all your perimeters and everything taken care of to make your appointments really relatively quick. They're not long appointments. They only take 20 to 30 minutes and you're actually only getting radiated for 10 to five, depending on like where, how they have to position you. Um, but the downfall to that one is I have to do that every day, Monday through Friday, for 30 rounds. So for six weeks, essentially. So starting on June 2nd, or June 2nd, wow. That's already been gum and gone. June 22nd, um, I will start getting radiation. And I'll be doing radiation and chemo um, for those six weeks. And then once I'm done with radiation, then it'll just be chemo. So it's been a little overwhelming like it's not anything that I didn't know that it was going to happen or that I had to do but like when you actually have to like 
put yourself into reality that it's going to happen. Like this was just things that we had talked about, but now it's actually happening. So this week was tough. Um, not going to lie. It was tough to like wrap my head around and like, okay, we can do this again. Because you think, or at least I thought when I got diagnosed, okay, like it's baby steps. You accomplish this and then you're done and then you're done. And it's not that way. There just keeps being more and more stuff added so that, um, it doesn't come back. And like I said, I am very blessed that I was persistent with my doctors when I first found the lump and I went in and I got it checked because had I not at the percentage that it was growing, I literally would not be alive today. What baby? You're done with your breakfast? Okay, shut the door. I'll clean it up in just a second. Um, Madison's done with her breakfast. She wanted to tell me. So, but I just wanted to hop on and give everybody an update. Ma Hang on one second, guys. Madison, what? No, I'm almost done. Um, so anyways, um, I lost my train of thought. I do it all the time. My husband hates it. My mental clarity has not been that great these days. So, anyways, um, so I'm doing starting chemo right next week, radiation, um, the week, not the week after, but the week after that. There's cotton flying all over because of the cotton trace. So, um, oh, and I saw plastics yesterday. After our mishap, everything's healing fine. I got to actually, like, go buy a bra and try and figure out what size I am now. Oh, and I know where I got interrupted. So I've had, and I, at the beginning, I had said that a lot of people have asked, like, why didn't I do a mastectomy? When I first found out I had breast cancer, I was totally 100% gung-ho um, mastectomy versus lumpectomy. Um, and then when you have larger breasts like I do... The recovery, the, um, the recovery, the, um, complications, there's a whole different slew of things that went into the thought process of, like, when it finally came down to choosing which, which, what we were going to do versus what we weren't. My biggest weighing factor was, <laughs> with a mastectomy, I wasn't going to be able to allow to lift or do anything with Jackson for 12 to 16 weeks and I can tell you that like the last four weeks have been very hard I don't get to change him I don't get to hold him unless it's like down in between my legs I don't get to like snuggle him um and that has been very hard mentally like the physical stuff it's whatever but like mentally if you're not in the game and you don't have your mind right and you aren't trying to stay positive, that can really fuck you up. Excuse my language. So that was very hard for me. So when we had like talked about it, because this was a decision made by me and my husband, because we discussed it with the doctors and it wasn't just happening to me. My son, Nicholas, finally... Um, told me why he was doing the things he was doing and why, I don't know if you guys know this, but he hasn't been living at home for the last six weeks, essentially. And I love you, Nicholas. So if you watch this, I love you, kid. Um, but my 18 year old, he left. Um, and it's not that he left. I also made him leave because he wasn't following my COVID rules to keep me safe. And he's 18 and I get it and it's hard, but I finally went and talked to him a couple of nights ago at a distance <laughs> and it's hard to watch your family members. If you have family members that have cancer, I watched my grandfather die from stomach cancer and I knew going into this that like this was going to be hard on me physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it. But what I knew it was going to do to my family, that's been the hardest part for me because they can't help you. They can't take away the pain. They can't make it go away. They can't stop you from having the side effects. They can't make it go faster. They can't slow it down. They can't speed it up. They are helpless. They just have to sit there and watch you suffer. And that part has been really hard. And it was really hard for Nicholas. 
And I went to him and I told him because I needed to do this. this. is something new I'm doing. I'm trying to talk about my emotions in the moment because I have a really bad habit of like stuffing them way deep down and not talking about them for years. Um, so trying something new this last week and it's actually really helped. Um, I went and talked to my son. I told him how I felt about that whole situation. Um, I told him I was hurt and I was angry and I was mad because in my mind, he left me when I needed him the most. And it's not his job to take care of me. I'm his mother. But in my mind, I needed him then. And he left. And he hasn't been here to help with the stupid stuff. Just like taking care of his brother and sister for 30 minutes. That was so helpful. And he hasn't been here. So I told him I was, in the beginning, I was angry and mad at him. But I'm not anymore. Like, I get it. He's 18. It's not his burden to bear. But then he also in turn told me that, like, he couldn't do it. It was very hard because he's like, I can't help you. I can't take it away from you. I can't make it go faster. I can't, I can't do anything. He felt helpless. So it was easier to leave and not be around it every single day than to stay. And I absolutely 100% get that. I have tried really hard to be positive and like try and do what I can do for me to help my husband with the kids and all of that but some days are hard there were some days where I didn't get out of bed so um it is what it is anyway so chemo radiation everything's healing fine after we had our little mishap um and the most exciting news out of yesterday was I got I can hold my baby again so Little Mr. Jackson doesn't want to be held very much because he's so mobile now. He's trying to walk. But I got to hold him, and it was the most amazing moment. And my aunt was with me when I, she got to give him to me, and I actually got to hold him for the first time in four weeks. Like, actually hold him. And he was sleeping when she gave him to me, and he didn't realize, like, it was me. And then when he woke up, he, like, panicked for a second. But then he realized, and he was just so happy. And, oh, it was the best feeling ever. So that was awesome. Um, so I can, I'm off of weight restriction and I can start taking care of the kids again. Not well, lifting them. I can start lifting stuff and doing stuff around the house again. Like I literally wasn't doing anything for a month, which kind of sucked because I literally had to ask my husband to get like a plate out of the cupboard or a glass because I couldn't lift my arms up or put them down or whatever. So, but I got cleared by everybody this last week and all the doctors. So that's good. I'm sorry for rambling wanted to give you guys an update and please 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 if you have something I know that like doctors aren't be all end all or whatever but please if you have something that's wrong with you if you think something's not right it doesn't matter if it's a lump in your breast or something on your body a skin spot or whatever go get it checked because if you wait it may be too late it really may um which is scary to some people. I mean, I know the unknown and, like, the knowing is scarier than actually knowing. But if you have a family and you have children that rely on you, like, it's only the right thing to, to do to, to go get it checked. To be there for them. Because I'm going to tell you, it's much harder for them to lose you. And find out after the fact that it could have possibly been prevented. So. There is... What's ASU? I don't know what ASU is, Frank. So, anyway, sorry. Um, but I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And that's my update on my saga. <laughs> and I will talk to you all soon.